Hello and welcome to Hi and welcome to the Virtual Intech 2021 live from our small but nice studio here in Ditzingen. I hope you are all well. We send worldwide. My name is Chris Brau and uh, I have the pleasure to be a host today. And uh, all the guests that you can see here are tested for Corona negative uh, with negative results. Otherwise, they would not sit here. And uh, also, all the other colleagues behind the cameras are, have been tested, and we strictly respect the hygiene measures and uh, an extra for that uh, event developed hygiene concept. So now let's start with our next topic, and uh, I'd like to give you the following instruction, introduction. All uh, the companies who machine goods would like to get more and more efficient because they want to be competitive. And here we come to the smart factory, which is the topic of our next round table. Is the smart factory the next logical step in technology evolution? Because the smart factory is not only decisive today, but also for the future. And this is why Trump develops excellent individual products that are ready for Industry 4.0, but also works in the development of digital products, IT software, for example, to take the customer on this journey towards digitalization. Data records, data analysis, and uh, all these things are the key for uh, the competitivity of the companies. A long introduction, and we have also uh, quite a big round table here. Here we have only true connect experts. Let me start with Christina Sandu from the area consulting, from the product management. We have Manuel Schwestka with us. Hi, Manuel. From the development, Jens Ottnert. Nice to meet you again. And also here from the area services, Johannes Böttcher. Nice to be here. So definitely, it's a nice round. Are you relaxed? Are you well? Yeah, really perfect. We can't almost wait for it. So let's start directly. Christina, my first question is for you. In this context of uh, the digital change, what are the biggest challenges that our customers have to face? And when you hear the word smart factory, like we talk about it, it sounds as if I get a key ready concept for my company. Is it as easy as that? I think we all wish that uh, it was as easy as that, but we are not yet at that point. I think many challenges that we see in our consulting concept at the customer don't have necessarily to do with digitalization at first sight. But uh, afterwards, yes, and we have to understand different things. Once we have to understand where is uh, the path that our customers want to take, because this is a decisive point, and then how can we also um, uh, develop solutions? Yeah, Because when we offer solutions to our customers, then uh, they also find new uh, possibilities where to apply them. So we have to have a look at the productivity costs, the throughput times. So quite often people waste a lot of time searching things instead of working. And so in reality, when we evaluate these processes, they look completely different. So I think many of these challenges can be solved by digitalization and can slowly be changed into a second um, production. And I think here at Trumpf, we are able to offer digital tools and services for an individual machine, for the operation of the machine. But uh, we also think in a global uh, point of view. And I think, Manuel, that we have really exciting subjects in the pipeline. And I think we will mention some of these points. Yes, Johannes, you are completely right. It means the start point of the digitalization is our machine, or it's a, it's a machine tool. But this is just the start point, and uh, that is uh, actually where we really start working. The added value is more between the machines and the workstations, and this is uh, our focus. 
So uh, starting with the machine, we have a lot of different options that uh, are directly at the machine, software options, automation like loading and unloading, automation, but also close areas like, for example, our intelligent assistance systems, the sorting guide, the indoor tracking system, track and trace. And uh, also, we have a look at the complete uh, uh, production without true tops fab that actually links the workstations, the machines, and also the workers. So it sounds like a kind of a modular system. Yes, that's true. That's true. This is really the direction where we want to go and where we want to offer our solutions because our customers have one thing in common they machine sheet. And uh, furthermore, their challenges and challenges and their visions are completely different. And to be able to provide solutions for all of them, we need that kind of modular kit. Many subjects are direct, there we start directly with the processes, direct or indirect processes. Others are a kind of a planning schedule where the customers want to um, achieve their targets only after some years. And uh, we have to consider all these points. Uh, maybe a little bit more concrete. I think our customers are most of all interested in how can we support processes directly at the machine and also around the machine. And uh, what Johannes already said, we can support the processes, but we can also uh, support directly the machine. We have, for example, the service app that, in case of an error, can help fast and automated. For example, we get automated reports sent directly to the customer or also so uh, at a short time after the, the intake, we will uh, start, we will enable a release that will simplify the spare parts ordering for our customer. By a simple picture, you can identify a spare part then. And so uh, that is uh, to create a solution on one of the simple levels, but we can extend that. We can also have a look at the avail availability of the machine. So we can say we can predict certain features, we can detect errors quite early, predictive maintenance, exactly, that's uh, the key word, and we can also eliminate these errors then. And uh, we want to take the fear from our customers, so we uh, want to show our customers we are not only there to offer a big solution for a big company, but we are also there for the small customers, and we want to take them uh, on the journey with us step by step. What is the role of uh, the worker? Yeah, I just thought, uh, as uh, he said, uh, taking the fear away. Yeah, many people think that only robots work in a smart in a smart factory. No workers anymore. This is not uh, the situation that we see at a short or medium term. You talked about track and trace, which is a kind of a GPS for the factory, and we want to do something similar like Google Maps for the factory for the production. And when we think how uh, did Google Maps look like when uh, we didn't have a smartphone, we uh, wrote something in at the computer, we printed it on paper, yeah, and that was a kind of a map. It was uh, something, yeah, that we used like that. And uh, it started to be interesting when we had the device, when we had the cell phone. So we know exactly where to go. I can see where a traffic jam is. So the added value is giant, is huge. And uh, Seb Herberger, an, uh, a former football trainer, he said always, yeah, rebound thing must go into the goal, into the corner thing, yeah. And uh, so we have to work with the human being. We can't do it against the human being. Yeah, that's very nice. And uh, which factors are also decisive besides the besides the digitalization. Well, it is more and more important because we already heard that we have that whole uh, that whole um, observation. We have a look at the complete process chain from the goods receipt, um, the machines between that for certain activities we need expertise from other uh, partners or third party companies. An actual example is our partnership with company Jung Heinrich. There we we uh, connect our TrueTops FAB to an automated guided vehicle system so we know where 
and when the sheet is cut, is bent, when it has to be further processed, and uh, the vehicles from Jungheinrich bring it, bring it to the correct place at uh, the right time. So this is a point, workstations, third-party machines, everything has to be integrated, which is the central point for the future. Yes, I, I wanted to go uh, one step back how uh, we can uh, combine the different sources because Johannes you mentioned the point increase the performance at the machine and we get that also out of data coming from somewhere else and the sorting guide as one example can uh, do exactly that that means for all those who don't yet know the sorting guide it's uh, the support that does all the bureaucracy all the paperwork yeah nobody wants to fill in papers and write things into lists yeah so this is the task of the sorting guide, and this is exactly what our customers estimate. The customers that have it, uh, that use it, like test customers, and uh, I think one company already ordered the second one. The product manager is happy about that. And uh, yeah, people sometimes ask, why didn't you do that for years already? Yeah, that's the point. The lasers get faster and faster, and we have to get along with them. But uh, a lot of things changed in technology, data analysis, and uh, what we use is uh, AI, is artificial intelligence under the hood. And uh, 10 years ago, still worldwide, we could do basic research in this sector. We started five years ago to do some research on this area because a human being can recognize when a sheet has to be removed from the machine. But uh, we ca he can't write down the if and conditions. Yeah, so. Uh, it always has to be a stable process. And this is something new that we integrated as technology here. And once you have everything, you have these new uh, chances, then you think, what does the machine do? What happens in the processes around, in the intralogistics? And then you suddenly discover completely new features, completely new aspects. So we sat down together with our customers. We had a look at the dashboards. We went deep into the subject. And then we found out that uh, there is a lot of potential by cutting and sorting, uh, putting into a better relationship. And uh, then you come uh, out with a higher productivity. After all, it is very simple. But now we have it really uh, in our hands. And this changes a lot. And I think this is really the exciting aspect that uh, you mentioned. What we need are the data. It means data are the base to do, for example, predictive uh, services or performance services that you just mentioned. But with these data, we will really work carefully and with responsibility. It means we need the data, but we also need you as a customer so that we are able to work with these data because what we want are the shop floor data to be able to develop the services. And I think this is a very exciting aspect that in the future, the condition data and also the performance data of the shop floor get uh, Will, will, will be the base to be able to, to do that path together with our customer as a solution provider. And I would really like to ask for your cooperation and your support because we can only be successful with the development of true services when we can use your customer data together. And uh, that is another question that I wanted to ask that sounds like a huge data flow. And why should you give your data to Trump? Well, we will almost celebrate our 100th anniversary here, Trump, and uh, I think uh, somebody who marked us, our senior boss, Berthold Leibinger, he always was the honorable merchant, and uh, I think this is in our DNA, and all of us understood that for us it's only about making our customers successful, because then we have a feedback, and uh, that means we don't have any interest in doing something else with the data. It's just about this point. Sounds absolutely plausible. And uh, then 
back to the subject. Trump, after all, wants to be a solution provider, right? And uh, what is your motivation behind? I think very clearly the journey goes exactly in this direction to a digital world where we have a lot of automated features, where you can benefit a lot from the digital media and subjects. But our task here and now is it to take the customers with us to make everything possible and to take care that our customers step by step can do their steps in this direction. That does not only refer to sheet machining, but to many other sectors. And our task for the customers is very important. We have to help the customers approach these uh, features and this path. And we have to show that we do not only um, show individual subjects at the customers, but we have to show that we integrate all the processes from the purchase of the customer to the dispatch of the um, goods and uh, so that all this chain works works without any problems. Did we forget something or do we continue now with questions and answers? No, I, I'd like to add something. Maybe I'm a little bit slow today, I don't know. So when we talk about doing a journey together with our customer and to do it together, I think this is also the basic change. So how does it work in uh, sheet machining or in machine construction? From generation to generation, we have higher performances. So that means Trumpf made research, invented technology, and in the next machine, we always install the progress. But on the other hand, once the machine is outside in the field, we uh, do not have a lot of wearing at Trumpf. We have so many service engineers working all over the world. and. Uh, so uh, they do their daily job. Yeah, means we do not only have men as service engineers. In the meantime, there are also some women outside. So anyhow, we, we don't have a lot of, of wearing. We have, but not too much. So when we consider this from the digital point of view, we can have that paradigm change. So the machines learn, they get better with the time. And that happens with the data. By the combination of data, we develop new algorithms. We continue developing them. Then we load these new algorithms on the machine. For example, the sorting guide that has to, to work under almost all circumstances we get better and better with the experience that we learned in the field. And this is something completely new in machine construction. And uh, believe us, we also have to face our challenges. And that is why it is so important that we work in a partnership together with our customers, because only together we can do that, because we come from that mechanical world, too, where we thought a lot like analog and uh, to, to change change the company now into a digital world has also obstacles for us and challenges, sure. But I think all of us are very happy and we are looking forward to this change that we will realize together with our customer. And we see that uh, we can increase the added value for us and for our customers. And at the end, all of us will be successful like that. So yeah, I really feel that uh, you are so happy with this uh, challenge. It's a positive challenge anyhow. and. Uh, Afterwards, everything will be better. So, um, thank you for the conversation. And now I would like to pass the word to our audience. If there are questions, then please ask your questions in the chat. And uh, there are different buttons, I think, in a window. I think you have got four buttons all together. And one of these buttons leads you directly to our live chat. So when you click this button, you are in, and you can ask your questions directly directly because you don't have that uh, opportunity so often that you get your answers, uh, your questions answered directly from our experts. Now let me see. Okay. 
Let me see. So I already have two or three questions, but basically speaking, how did you experience this change? Because um, I led a conversation with Gerd Dufke. You all know Gerd Dufke. So everybody knows Gerd Dufke, so you should know him here in this company too. So he said there are two, um, pe um, two types of people who take on the cha one type who um, takes on the challenge and um, the other type who is afraid of this challenge. What about you? Um, did you have to be pushed to take on the challenge or were you um, open for this challenge? Well, I think um, everybody had to be nudged or pushed a little bit. Of course, there are a lot of exciting topics um, that are a challenge. Of course, you have to enter into detail. You have to prepare yourself. You have to find access to the topic yourself. And I believe I believe um, that um, we did this very quickly. So this technical evolution is also very fast and we had to try and keep up. And so this is something that a lot of people are afraid of because you need um, a lot of stamina in order to understand the technologies and do the abstraction. So um, who can explain um, technology in just one sentence nowadays? It's not possible at all. So it'll take a while until you can identify yourself with new technologies, um, so application and apps, um, everybody uses it um, as if it were normal. Ten years ago, it would have been um, difficult and somebody might have had to talk ten minutes about it to explain what applications are to other people. So I was always very enthusiastic about new technologies, but now we need to implement them and um, spread the knowledge uh, to everybody. So I would like to comment here because I think it's um, a little bit more difficult for our customers to understand these new technologies because what we experience during our conversations is that there are issues that are very hot potatoes, hot issues. They have to, the customers have to deal with um, these topics immediately. So the customers are very involved um, in what they're doing at the moment and they don't have the time to take a look at future technology. So we have to pick up um, our customers, take them on a journey, and make sure they become as enthusiastic as us um, with regard to new technologies. Quite frequently, we're talking about customers um, who only have 10 employees, of course, though we will have to support you. And Trump is a good partner. We will take you by the hand and support you. Yes, yeah, so um, people are quite hesitant, are quite worried, um, because a lot of small customers think that Trump is only for the big players. But that's not true. Anybody can turn to Trump and just start. Yeah, um, 80 to 90 percent are the small and medium enterprises. So particularly with regard to digital solutions, we will focus on small and medium enterprises. Uh, the service app is an example. We we need small and medium enterprises in order to bring about this digital change. Yeah, Johannes, um, uh, let me um, interrupt here. It's um, got a lot to do with motivation. We are developing a lot of new solutions, but Jens has just uh, mentioned this. Of course, we have to concentrate, pool the knowledge. Um, knowledge always means data, so we have to pool this data and then create new products on the basis of this data. So we have developed a lot of prob uh, products um, that bring about an added value. And uh, before, though, we had to understand the links outside of the machine. And I'm thinking about your pushing, your nudge here. So um, pushing and nudging is something uh, when you're very um, hesitant. I have the feeling that I'm pulling, not pushing. So uh, I come from a research department, so I am allowed to pull people. So um, of course, um, I am allowed to think about things of the future. But um, I have a test customer who used this sorting guide. We had a three-hour meeting. We brought the customers. Um, and they were all motivated to these meetings. So 
they were very pleased when they saw um, where there was room for improvement. So they uh, were quite relieved that there was room uh, for improvement, that they could actually become better. And so we're doing this um, at a regional level. We're trying a new format. So um, we will pass on the sorting guide. For now, it is not um, available to buy. Um, we will have a before and after session, and that's a completely different format. So this is uh, a journey for us, too. Um, we are learning by doing, and we're inviting customers to join us on this journey. So here we have customers from the questions from the audience, from the customers. So smart factories and small batch productions, lot one. So how are you working on automation to help flexibility? So I would like to talk about our flagship of the True Laser Center. So we are pooling the data from every single retrieval, from every single event, um, every single time a workpiece was cut. Then we have um, 200,000 uh, suction cups um, that remove the part. If the part cannot be removed, um, the machine tries this, I think, um, 16 times in, a t in total in order to remove the part in different ways. And this um, is the data that is pooled, and then we try to gain insight from this data. We can see um, if things are going to work, if things are not going to work. Mm -hmm. And so that's the way we support lot size one, because we know if we have 10,000 parts and um, we want to produce them, um, that's not a problem. But if we only have 10 or 5 um, parts and we have to test them first, then it will not be economically viable. I would like to comment here, too. I think this is very important for our smaller customers, um, for our smaller customers who do not have too much automation, because they face the following challenge. So they have a mixture of different um, lot sizes, and this has changed. So at the beginning, um, they had big um, jobs. Now we have smaller jobs that are mixed. So you don't have a general answer in this sense. If uh, the overall process is efficient, however, so we're talking about the preparation, um, the programming, the manufacturing, and if we're efficient in all of these areas, then um, we can also manufacture one part very efficiently and remain competitive. But if we have a structure that causes a lot of costs because everything is done manually, um, you have to check things five times, and um, uh, the papers cannot be found then you will not um, be effective cost-wise. So what we try is to address both situations. So we try to um, make available a solution to any type of company and um, to provide a solution automatically. And this takes us back um, to the modular principle. So we have a solution tailored to the needs of every single customer. So you have so as many different solutions as you have customers. Yeah, exactly. So here we have the next question. Considering that not all customers are prepared for Industry 4.0, how can Trump assist them in their processes, in their layouts. How can Trump show the customers the benefits, so return on invest investments and so on? So we are assuming that uh, not all customers are prepared for Industry 4.0, so how can Trump uh, support the customers? in this way, and how can Trump um, show the, ben the benefits with regard to ROI, return on investments, and so on and so forth. So we could both answer <laughs> who starts. So how um, do you design a complicated system, a complicated machine? So we take a look at the engine room nowadays and compare it to 30 or 40 years ago, uh, 30 to 4, uh, 
two years ago, um, we had a lot of space. Um, nowadays, we have CAD, and so we have a very compact design. Or um, we have an air vent uh, for the extraction system, for example, or the air conditioning. So everything is packed into very small um, space. So we have a CAD system in order to create this. And nowadays, we also have a tool to simulate how a factory will work. And uh, by using these tools, we can create different scenarios. Take a look at the different scenarios. And the question is, what is the basis? And the basis are the data. And we need the data for a benchmark, so we know how flexible the customer has to be, how many products need to be manufactured. Um, do we have assemblies or single products? So this um, will lead to different designs depending on the customers. And so um, we will support the company and help, help them grow. So um, customers who are not ready for Industry 4.0 um, can be supported by Tromf. We can focus on all areas. So we can say this is um, our business. It's based on trust. And no, no matter where worldwide, we already um, have a very good uh, relationship ba based on trust between our, between our f uh, field sales reps and our customers. We can understand our customers' needs. We know um, our customers' um, journey and we also create a schedule specific to every customer. And we also have a department, an internal department, where we have um, sketches and ideas that we can use to work with. And we can create an optimized layout here. And we can also um, try and uh, optimize the material flow. It doesn't matter whether we're dealing with the existing um, production or a new building. And then we also have uh, the engineers who are developing a new building, for example. And so this takes us back back to a very simple start, and then we can adapt things step by step and create a network factory and a simulation, and we can provide anything. So it's a journey. So I would also like to talk about the future. We talked about performance services just briefly. We touched upon this topic, and we have um, the support of the manufacturing design. We want to support the customer in growth so we have a mm, type of shadow mode we monitor in which we monitor the customer and we generate the data and we try to improve the situation on the basis of the data we get, for example, from the sorting guide. And the more customers we include in such processes, um, the more they become scalable and the more valuable they are. And of course, this will take about another five years before we actually reach um, this goal. Yeah, five years. Um, nobody's ever said it uh, that um, precisely. So uh, we would like to be able to scale the data, scale the projects, and that's why it's important um, that we start um, at a simple beginning, but we do have a vision um, to do everything automatically and use um, artificial intelligence, big data in order to do it. So everything has been recorded five years at the latest. We will um, come back and put you on the spot, okay, Johannes? So, of course, um, you do have a feeling for the customers. Um, you have a relationship based on trust with the customers, and that's in sen essential in order to support the customers. The que next question is, how do you plan to use AI in planning and programming processes? So, um, AI in programming processes. <laughs> so what is important that you have to interrupt our colleague here every now and again because um, he needs to be able to, to slow down somewhat here. No, we do have enough time. Yeah, we're heading in this direction. It's um, what I meant before. It's for our flagship, the True Laser Center. So this is our playground. This is where we test and uh, try everything out. 
So if I'm programming a part, I have to make many, many decisions. So of course, um, we try to support a lot by using our software, but what's the reality? So Sepp Herberger said um, the truth, the reality is in the field. In our case, um, it's on the sheet, so what actually happens in the machine. And if we learn to predict what will happen in the machine on the basis of um, the data, some simulations, and the domain knowledge we have learned in the past years, then we will be able to predict what will actually happen on the machine. And then we can avoid errors occurring on the machine. And this is something that we have to um, focus on. So we can be on the safe side, use a conservative model. So um, for the night shift, for example, but we can also configure the model slightly differently because um, we, you always have some coincidences. Um, sheet metal always wins. Um, so uh, the consistency of sheet metal is not always the same. So sometimes it's a surprise. We're talking about the quality of the material here. So sometimes you can focus more on performance and we can say, look, we can try more things out in the day shift. It doesn't really matter that we have somebody to help us um, straight away. And then we can see if it works or not. And I think everybody who wants to enter into this experiment with us. So I would like to get to know this customer who asked the question. So um, you do not have a partial start um, with um, artificial intelligence. Um, you've got to learn. And when a person starts to walk, learns to walk, he always, he always um, falls, and that's normal. So you don't only have a positive results, but you also have to deal with the negative results. So you learn from mistakes, and that's the principle we're working with. So that's why I'm extremely grateful if somebody is willing to enter into this experiment with us. So that would be super. So it wasn't that long. So you never know what happens. Then we have a further question. How to manage the digital transformation in an environment with um, multiple processes and machines from different manufacturers? How to link all of this together? So how can you manage um, the digital transformation in an environment with with different processes um, from machines, from different manufacturers. So, Chris, um, I mentioned this before. So, we're becoming more and more open for the entire process. And uh, in this case, the world is not only blue, so we do also have other colors, not only Trump blue. And so we're trying to use digital tools that support um, the person in the company. It doesn't matter where he or she is working. So um, a person working on a laser machine has to carry out similar steps. He or she has to prepare. Um, run the production, do commissioning work, for example. And if we have a central system that is connected to True Tops Fab, for example, we can solve these problems that may arise. So we can link it to our solution. Um, what is important is that the data and the know-how comes together. And then we can digitize different processing steps and make them more um, efficient, even though we're talking about a machine from a different producer. And of course, when we um, develop solutions, um, we need interfaces, um, we need industrialized standards, and this would make a network in a smart factory possible. And so we support our customers so they are not left alone. So I think a process has started here at Trump 2. Trump is becoming open in order to use Marty. So this is um, a language that machines can speak so they can communicate. And then we have track and trace. Uh, we also have an unlock standard here. So we have an organization that deals with this data. So we have different tracking technologies um, that are summed up um, for the industry. So everything becomes interoperable. So thank you very much for your answer. The next question, why is Trump the correct partner for the smart factory? You have a lot of com competitors. So 
um, I saw a very exciting overview. I believe that at the end of the day, we have the broadest portfolio at the moment. So we have um, uh, support for cutting and joining, welding, everything that works automatically and that can be connected to the store systems. And particularly in our smart factory in Chicago, but also here in Ditzingen, we can uh, show you these processes fully automated. And this um, means um, that we have an overview over the entire processing chain. So um, from the beginning, from the offer, from the quote, quote to the goods dispatch, um, we can be a partner for our customers. And you can uh, come here and see it live. And I think this distinguishes um, a trump from our competitors. So we have um, uh, support for a huge part, almost all of the processing chain. So I would um, like um, to praise our audience for these great questions. And here we have the next question. Great work. So Trump has always sold machines, and now the market wants solutions. Do you think Trump is adapting at the right speed the market needs? So Trump has always sold machines, now we need solutions. So um, Trump has become a solution provider. So is um, Trump developing fast enough to adapt to the needs of the market? Um, Christina should answer this question because um, she's the expert here. Well, it always depends. So um, we do both. So we have a lot of customers who say this is going far too fast for us. And then we have customers um, who ask us, are you fast enough? And I think the important thing to bear in mind is what is the goal the company is pursuing? So we need to find um, solutions for the customer. And I think we are um, right on track here. We're developing in the, in the right direction. Um, so so we are trying to focus on the topics that are relevant for our customers, and we can re-prioritize uh, if necessary. And so let's be honest, let's be frank. This is a huge job, a huge job. Um, you never know what's right. So we have to be honest. So of course, we have huge smart factory um, projects, and they will not help our small customers at the beginning. Beginning. But still, every day, um, uh, we do our best. And so you can trust us here. We are trying to support all customers from um, simple uh, little steps to a complete um, smart factory. But it's a big challenge um, uh, to strike a balance here. And that is obvious. So that was a very honest answer. And um, yeah. I was able to um, see this in other presentations, so it's not just a lot of hot air. Yeah, well, what is important is that a lot um, is done in the background. So you need to uh, restructure software, update the complete star um, software in order to make companies ready for um, uh, for um, digitization. And for a long time, um, nothing seems to be happening, but these are the most important, the decisive steps. And I think this is uh, what um, we're dealing with. Um, so we have to ensure that the customers, um, they feel at home, even though it took quite a while until the customer received what he or she always wanted. And so the next question. The next question, digital services. What are the technical prerequisites for visual assistance? Well, that is uh, quite simple to answer. At uh, the end of the day, you need a well-working internet connection. That is uh, the important thing. I know that uh, this is already the challenge sometimes. And uh, you need uh, a suitable final device. Here in Europe, these are mainly and in Asia too. These are mainly cell phones or tablets that you can use therefore in the United States uh, as a test. We have the smart glasses. Uh, 
and um, we use that technology individually also at uh, other customers, but uh, we found out that uh, we are more successful with tablets and cell phones because we always have them with us. And uh, then one more question. What has the size of my company, uh, or what, which size do I need as a company so that the smart factory makes sense? I think smart factory is not a matter of size. It is uh, more a matter of where do I want to go to, what is my turnover, who are my customers. To give a global answer is uh, very difficult because the path to a smart factory is always worth it. But maybe the start points are different. And our colleagues in the field service, they uh, are there to support the customer in these specific questions. Perfect. And uh, can, I, can I integrate my ERP system and, uh, if possible, third-party systems in the smart factory? Well, this is uh, also quite individual, but we are open for a lot of different interfaces. We have our own interfaces to many uh, well-known ERP MES systems. So uh, already today and for several years, we have uh, quite a extensive data exchange, and uh, so uh, ask your concrete questions to our field service engineers. And uh, well, there is API first. That is a kind of a guideline. That means we work with interfaces everywhere, and uh, that is exactly that shows exactly in this direction. For example, can I use a track and trace only together with FAB? Answer: No. The first customer that we ever had with the system uses another system, uh, an ERP, and he now set a customized solution between and with these interfaces, we are able to talk in both directions. Yeah, to, to, to uh, come to a perfect integration. On the other side, maybe it is necessary to do something else because he had a very old system which was not yet designed, therefore. And uh, like that, when you uh, talk to Trump, maybe you have less worries, but it works, yeah. API first, I think I was <laughs> already finished mentally, but okay. So, there is another question coming in. Which is, or what role does the shop floor management has in the smart factory? A very important question. I would say that this is the base, the base of a smart factory. So especially that topic that at any time you get the information about what you are producing, where the parts are, what the performance is, and how will be the performance in the future. This will be a more and more important uh, subject. And shop floor management simply means that based on key figures, I can control the production and the individual workplace. And uh, so you can decide following to your feeling or you can do it uh, based on key figures when you have a reasonable overview when you have the data when you work uh, digitized then you can better control your next steps and you can also improve you can learn out of errors and that is exactly the base for a smart production okay at this place maybe the dialogue is very interesting I just uh, talked about uh, customer were uh, out of uh, the sorting guide data we really made an inquiry with uh, the customer and we asked them drop and cut is a process that you use a lot it's a kind of a refinishing process it's image based with some augmented reality and uh, then uh, we said you have to have uh, a big problem here and uh, the answer was no we do that intentionally like this because like this we can integrate all our remainders that is really good because we just put it on the machine and then we can solve uh, the problem in place and then we saw okay there are more needs than we ever imagined and we can integrate also these uh, customer features and continue improving them working on them and uh, like this we always look for points that we have to together and uh, 
processes that we that happen really on the shop floor. Thank you for your answer. So, uh, yeah, I think there are no further questions. So, um, I think we now finish our roundtable, which was really interesting and really nice. And uh, I hope you also enjoyed it. Thank you, Christina, Manuel, Jens, and Johannes. I hope that you also enjoyed the roundtable here. Yes, we did. <laughs> and and uh, regarding the feedback, it seems to be a really exciting subject. And uh, I'm looking forward to meeting again. Thank you and have a nice day. Thank you to our audience for watching us. Thank you for the many questions you sent us. And uh, I'd like to invite you to come back, to be back with us to the next um, presentation, which will be the presentation about industrial quantum technology. It would be a pleasure to receive you back here. See you. Bye. ...to adapt your production to meet every challenge, just with the swipe of a finger. And with the term... Just imagine, you're able to adapt your production to meet every challenge, just with the swipe of a finger. And with the turn of your hand, simply release untapped potential. In a connected world, the challenge is to produce quickly, flexibly, and in a sustainable way. To manage a large number of jobs um, in an increasingly shorter time. No, 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 no. I thought only I could hear you when the microphone was on. Or have Important in a smart factory it is that the the actual process is smart Good. and can react to the current situation that we have at hand. That's why the smart factory is a logical step in the technological evolution. Networking the material and information flow, automation and process optimization. We consider the processes that the customer from the beginning to until the end and check where are the single production steps and then we try to find a complete solution for his smart factory. Whether you are just starting out or are already on your way, together we provide complete transparency across production and planning. The most important thing is where is my customer order? What state is it in at the moment in order to be better in the next customer orders? The process is smart because it's transparent. I can reach every information step in the entire process from anywhere, anytime. No matter the part quantity, no matter processing time, the Smart Factory facilitates intelligent and smooth operation in your production, whether small or large. The key is to have basically the resources pulled together with interfaces, but also that the software is an open concept and you can easily add on to what you need. And even after it's implemented, we bring you to the next level in production. Together, we plan your individual production, step by step, from the first touch to an efficient, intelligent process. We want to guide our customers until everything runs flawlessly and beyond that. The Smart Factory is the natural answer to your challenges because... The customer success is also the Trump success. It's a big challenge, but... Challenge accepted.